Hey guys, in this video we are going to look at how you can divide decimals without using a calculator. Now this is a core cool skill, but it's a really, really tricky one if you don't practice it enough. So this video is going to give you 15 practice questions and you can work through them at your own pace. You can do some again or you can skip forward to the harder ones at the end if that's what you want. Don't forget there are loads, loads more practice questions for you over on my website. These are the questions we are going to look at first when we are dividing decimals. And when we're dividing decimals, what we're actually doing is asking ourselves how many 0.7s fit into 4.2. So we're going to go through two methods here. First, we're going to go through a basic method, then we're going to make it a bit more complicated. So let's find out how many 0.7s do fit in 4.2. Well, one 0.7 definitely does. So do two 0.7s, that makes it 1.4. Let's add another 0.7, that would give us 2.1. 2.1 is still smaller than 4.2, so we can identify that 3 fit in. And then let's add on another 0.7. So we can now say that we are up to uh, 2.8. Another one would give us 3.5, and then another one would give us 4.2. So altogether, we have put exactly 6 0.7 into 4.2, and that is our answer to question 1. Now, we don't want to have to write out that list every single time, especially when we move to larger numbers and more complicated numbers, so we need a slightly faster method. Now, if you remember when we multiplied decimal, decimals, the method we used ignored the decimal place in the question. We just worked with the digits and then sorted out the decimal places at the end. So that's what we're going to try next. So for question one, we can say that 42 divided by 7, and at this point we're completely ignoring all the decimal places, 42 divided by 7 is 6. And that's the same answer, even if we ignore the decimal places, which is quite interesting and makes things a lot quicker. So let's try that for the next two questions. So question two would be 12 divided by four. Ignoring the decimal place, 12 divided by four is three. Now we can check this method by doing the first method. So 0 0.4, two 0 0.4s is 0 0.8, and then another one is 1.2. So with in 1.2, we can fit three 0.4s, giving us the same answer for two different methods. Question three for 1.5, we can write 15. And for 0.3, we can just write three. So we get 15 divided by three, which is five. For the next one, we can write 3.6 as 36 and then divided by four. Now that's already a whole number, 4 is already a whole number, and 36 divided by 4 is 9. So when we look at that, we're not actually saying that 3.6 divided by 4 is 9, that doesn't really make sense. So 9 is the wrong answer, and it's a wrong answer because we ignore the decimal place in one, but not in the other. Now 4 is actually only slightly larger than 3.6, so we're not going to fit the full 4 in, to the 3.6, we are going to fit nearly a full 4 in. We're going to fit 0.9 of a 4 in. We are going to go over this much more and improve this method when we move on to the next set of questions. So let's look at the last question for this level. 2.4 divided by 8. So 24 divided by 8 will give us 3. Now, again, looking at that, that doesn't seem like a sensible answer. We're not going to say that 3 eighths fit into 2.4. That's not going to work as 2.4 is smaller than 8. So we're just going to put the 3 here for the moment. And because that decimal we ignored, we're going to say it's 0.3. So the first thing we learned is that just like with multiplications and addition and subtraction, if you ignore the decimal places, you will get the correct digits and the correct decimal places don't actually change the numbers involved. 
But if we want to get the actual correct answer, then we need to look at the decimal places. And that is what we're going to do in the next set of questions. So for question one, we're going to use the same method. We have 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.5. So the first thing we are going to do is ignore the decimals and do 25 divided by 5, which is going to give us 5. But we know all the digits in our answer are going to be a 5. Now what we have to do now is correct for all the decimal places. Now we need to work out how many 0 0.5 or 5s will fit into 0 0.25. You might recognise that 0 0.25 is half of 0 0.5. So half of 0 0.5 will fit into 0 0.25. Now we can't just think and recognise numbers for all of these. So we're going to have to turn this into a proper method. Now what we're going to do is to shift the decimal point of the numbers in this calculation and shift all the numbers one point to the left. So we're now going to have 2.5 divided by 5. Are we allowed to do this? Well, if you think of the original calculation, 0 0.5 is double the size of 0 0.25. So 5 is double the size of 2.5. The same is true for the shifted calculation. So half of 5 will fit exactly into 2.5. So both of these give us the same answer. So let's try the bus stop method. If we're dividing 0 0.25 by 0 0.5, this isn't going to work. But dividing 2.5 by 5 will work for this. And it gives us the answer of 0.5. So let's try the next one. 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.5. So now we're going to try and bring this all together in a nicer method. What we're going to do is try and get rid of that second decimal place. Multiplying everything by 10 and shifting everything one space to the left. So 0 0.1 becomes 1 and 0 0.5 will become 5. Now it reads 1 divided by 5. We know the second number is a whole number, so we can do a bus stop method. Now what I'm going to do is be dividing by 5, so that goes on the outside. 0.5s fit into 1, and we're going to carry 1. 2 fives go into 10 exactly. So our answer is 0 0.2. Trying the next one, we have 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.2. And again, with the bus stop method, we want to get rid of that second decimal place, so we are dividing by a whole number. So we're going to multiply by 10 to shift the decimal places to the left. So 0 0.6 becomes 0 0.6, and 0 0.2 will become 2. So now the second number is a whole number, we can use a bus stop method. 2 goes on the outside since that's what we're dividing by, and 0 0.6 goes in the middle. Now it's important that you get these the right way around. If you get them the other way around, it can be very confusing. But remember, when you're dividing, it has to be by a whole number. So we're starting off by saying how many 2s go into 0, and 0 2s get into 0. Since 0, there isn't going to be anything to carry, but now we're saying how many times does 2 go into 6? And that is three times exactly. Then we just need to make sure the decimal places are lined up in the top and the bottom rows. And we have our final answer, which is 0 0.3. Now we have 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.4. To get rid of the second number having a decimal place, we can times everything by 10 and shift our decimal place. So we have 1.2 divided by 4. We can set up a bus stop method. We are now dividing by 4, so that goes on the outside, and 1.2 goes into middle. How many 4s go into 1? 0. Carry the 1. Now how many 4s go into 12? 3. 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.3. 
again, we can shift the decimal place. So we end up with 0 0.9 divided by 3. And now we have our whole number and we can set up our bus stop method. We are dividing by 3, so that goes on the outside. And 0 0.9 goes in the middle. How many 3s go into 0? Nothing, with nothing to carry. And how many 3s go into 9? Three of them. Make sure our decimal places is in place and lined up properly. And our answer is 0 0.3. Moving on to the hard questions, you see we have a mixture of decimal numbers and fractions. The best thing you can do for your fractions is learn your fraction to decimal conversions. And the first thing we need to do is to convert those fractions into decimals. So a half is going up, it be 0 0.5. A quarter is 0 0.25, a fifth is 0 0.2, two fifths is 0 0.4, and three tenths will be 0 0.3. Now that we have everything written as a decimal, these are the same as the questions we've just done, using the same method. So in the first question, we have 2.8 divided by 0 0.25. So if we shift the decimal place 1, we will get 28 divided by 2.5. That's not going to work with our method, so we need to shift the decimal place again, giving us 280 divided by 25. Using our bus stop, we are going to put 25 on the outside, 280 in the middle. 0 25s go into 2, so we're going to need to carry the 2. How many 25s go into 28? Well, that's one. Then we are going to have three left over, so we carry the three. How many 25s go into 30? Again, that is one remainder five. Now we need to make sure our decimal place is lined up. That comes after our 280, so that needs to go up the top after 0, 1, 1, and 2. 25s go into 50, giving us 0.2. We have 0 0.45 divided by 0 0.5. So now we're going to shift the numbers over so that we can get a whole number that we are dividing by. So that is going to become 4.5 divided by 5. So we're saying how many 5s fit into 4.5? Using our bus stop method, 5 on the outside, 4.5 in the middle. How many 5s fit into 4? 0. And then carry the 4 over. How many 5s fit into 45? That is 9. Make sure the decimals line up. Next question now, 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.2. Let's shift all the numbers one place to the left, times things by 10 trying to get a whole number to divide by. So we get 1.2 divided by 2. Using our bus stop method, 2 on the outside, 1.2 on the inside. How many 2s go into 1? That is 0, so carry the 1. How many 2s go into 12? That gives us 6. And make sure the decimal place is lined up. When you get confident with these, you can pause the video, try the rest yourself, and then come back and check the answers. Looking at question four now. Skipping stepping times in everything by 10, we're gonna have four on the outside and 3.6 in the middle. So how many fours go into three? Zero. Carry the three over. How many fours go into 36? That's nine. Make sure the decimal places are lined up, giving us 0 0.9. Moving on to question five and going straight into the bus stop method. Timesing our numbers by 10 so that we get our whole numbers. And if you want to do this bit in your head, that is absolutely fine. So on the inside, we're going to have 2.7. And on the outside, we are going to have three. So how many threes go into two? Zero, carry the two over. How many threes go into 27? 
nine. Make sure decimal places are lined up and our answer is 0 0.9.